What's up everybody? In this video, I'm going to be covering the ATmega 328P ICSP algorithm. ICSP stands for In-Circuit Serial Programming. ICSP is used to flash code onto microcontrollers without needing a bootloader. If you're curious how to set this up without diving into too much detail, check out my previous video. This video will cover the theory behind the ICSP algorithm, so if you want to take a deep dive, then keep watching. All content in this video has been primarily taken from the ATmega328P datasheet. Link in the description. I've also used screenshots of the Arduino ISP sketch, which implements the ICSP on an Arduino Uno. I highly recommend you check out both these resources. The first step in the ICSP algorithm is to power the chip while reset and source clock are set to zero. The horizontal line over reset means that the signal is active low, so it is usually high when nothing is connected to it. Since there is no way to guarantee that source clock will be low when the system is powered, reset must be held high for at least two CPU cycles of the target device after source clock is set to zero. Next, we must enable serial programming by sending the enable serial programming instruction on the MOSI pin. The instruction is 0x AC530000. Note the order in which the bytes are sent is AC followed by 53 followed by the zeros. Here is a screenshot of the part of the Arduino ISP sketch which implements step 2. Note the reset target command which is asserted for 100 microseconds, then deasserted before sending the instruction mentioned before. Step three is to confirm that the serial programming is enabled. If the ICSP device and target device are properly in sync, the 0x53 byte should be echoed back to the ICSP after the third byte is received. If the echo is incorrect, we must start over. A quick note about page sizing will help clarify the following step. The datasheet mentions this table. This table describes that the ATmega 328P has 32 kilobytes of flash, which is equivalent to 16K words. Each page has 64 words and there are 256 pages. If we do some math, we can find out that 32 kilobytes divided by 256 pages means there are 128 bytes per page. Since it also tells us that each page consists of 64 words, we can conclude that one word is equal to two bytes. Another thing to keep in mind is that each word of the target program is loaded one byte at a time into something called a page buffer. Each word of the target program has an associated address. The six bits of the low address byte are used to index the page buffer, and the seven bits of the high byte are used to index the flash page. The reason we have a buffer is because some types of flash memory can only write segments, aka pages of data, at a time. Other types of ROM can write individual bytes, such as EEPROM. So with this in mind, let's continue on to step four of the algorithm. Step four of the algorithm is to load the program byte by byte into the page buffer. The algorithm also requires that the low byte of the target program is loaded before the high data byte. Here is an example of the load program instruction for the low data byte. You can see that the opcode in this case is 40 followed by the address of this data byte and then the data. Similarly, there is a corresponding instruction for loading the high data byte and the only difference is we use 48 in the first byte of this instruction. I've attached the function that implements step four at a high level. Without going into too much detail, the function seems to be iterating through the pages, flashing the code into the page buffer, and committing the buffer 
to the target device. Here is the function that writes the program data into the page buffer. Notice how this matches with the instructions we discussed earlier. The use of this high-low variable allows both the low and high data bytes to be written, presumably because the high-low variable is either 0 or 1. Once the page buffer is full, we must commit this page to the target device. And the way we do that is with the write program memory page instruction, which is 4C followed by the program byte address and then zeros. Recall we need seven bits of the high address byte. And the reason for that is because we use these bits to index the page in flash memory. Two to the power seven happens to be 128, which is the exact size of our microcontroller's flash memory. One last thing to keep in mind is that we must wait a certain delay between successive page writes. Alternatively, we can pull this RDY register, but if not, then just wait four and a half milliseconds between writes. We can visualize this commit operation here, where the seven most significant bits of the high address byte are used to index the page, and then the page buffer is emptied into this index. Here is the source code for this operation. Notice how the spy transaction matches up with the instruction we discussed in the previous slide. One thing we can do to validate that everything worked correctly is read out each word that we flash to the target device over the MISO pin using the read instruction. Once we're satisfied with that, we can deassert reset by allowing it to go back to high. Then if we feel like it, we can turn off ECC. And that wraps it up. We've now covered the whole ICSP algorithm. As always, if you made it to the end, please drop a like and subscribe and stay tuned for more on electronics and firmware.